G'day and welcome back to Australian Natural High Tanning. Today I'd like to talk about the different methods of tanning. Here I have uh, three different methods that these, these skins have been tanned. These two have been done with chrome tan. This has been done with the traditional um, brain tanning. This one has been done with traditional chemical tanning, which is basically chrome tanning. What's chrome tanning? Chrome tanning is a chemical version of what we do with the natural brain tanning. Um, you can usually tell a chrome tan by the, the skin. See this one's a greeny colour, this one's a greeny colour. That tells you, yep, this is being chrome tanned. Do I chrome tan? No, I don't, I don't do it. But if you do it, you know, that's, that's totally up to you. I find with chrome tanning there's two reasons I don't do it. One, it takes too long and secondly it's it's quite poisonous. You, know, you have to be very careful with it. So I prefer to do traditional uh, brain tanning. Uh, saying that, if you do chrome tanning, you know, that's fine. But the main reason I don't do it, uh, or main two reasons I don't do it, is it takes too long and it's very toxic, You're very, very poisonous. You have to be very careful what you do. But saying that, you can get several different, um, depending on what you want, same as, same as traditional tanning. If you want something that's a little bit uh, not super soft, you just work it a little bit. You know, if you want something that's, that's really soft for clothes, you work it a bit more. And that's that's really shows. I've got an angora goat here. Yeah, you know, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, softly tanned. You could lie on this very easily, very comfortable. You know, and it's and it's soft. Some of the does have little hard bits in it. You know, mainly towards the edges. But apart from that, it's quite nice. But when you get the goat here, this is a goat skin. Okay, it's not very pliable, not as much as what this is. See, this is this is more stiff. Okay, and that's the reason the reason they did that is they wouldn't have worked it as much as the angora. So as they kept the stiffness, so when you walked on it, it just didn't pile up into one little lump on your floor. You know, it'll stay stiff and it'll sit on your floor comfortably. As I say, I mean, there's nothing wrong with chrome tanning, but I I do prefer um, natural tanning. This is also a, a form of chrome tanning or chemical tanning. This is a, a cowhide, very flexible. You, I mean, you could actually, well, I did, I, I bought these to make uh, like a trench coat out of them. You know, it's just something I just haven't got around to. But once again, you do get hard spots in them. You have to pick out your hard spots. See, mainly along the edges. What they've done with this one, okay, for you guys that, that do um, cow hides out there, yeah, I admire you, yeah, because it is a lot of hard work. What they do with these is once they've fleshed it, once they put it through a fleshing machine, then they put it through a machine that actually reduces it all down to one thickness. It's very, very thin. When they do that, the main thing they've got to be careful of, and I haven't seen any on this one, I have seen it on others, um, they have to be very careful that they don't go far enough down that they're going to disturb all, of, all the hair, the hair follicles. But it's thin enough that when you tan it, it's easy to tan. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult. With cows, buffaloes, anything like that, you have to reduce mainly the shoulders, the rump, and I think along the, the back. You have to reduce it because it's so thick. You know, it'll take you a very, very long time if you're going to um, tan it, and you want to tan it where it's very, very soft. You know, so that's that's another chemical method. You know, it works out well. I mean, yeah, you can you can get a desired. Um, 
look out of it. You know, you can, you don't need the chrome tan, you can, you can tan this way and make your, your clothes and that out of it. Or, this is a sheep, sheepskin. It looks tatty. It looks like, oh God, what have you done there? The reason it looks brownish is I haven't used the pumic stone on it yet. And what we do is just that, okay? And just clean it up. And so this is sheepskin. Sheepskin is very, very thin. You know, when you look at a, a, a deer skin to a sheepskin, you can feel the difference. You know, deer skin is much thicker. When you're working your sheepskin, be very careful. Even when you've got the, the wool on, on one side, still be careful because it is a thin skin and it doesn't take a lot to wreck it. But saying that, once you've got it, oh, very, very durable. Very, very durable. It would be excellent for making uh, clothes because it is thin and it does breathe well. And that's, that's the most important thing when you're wearing um, traditional made clothes. They must breathe. You know, these are more, you're heavier, probably more your wintery. These sort of things, uh, traditional Indians, that, uh, Native American Indians, um, they use things like, um, I was going to say elk then, but it's not elk. Um, smaller, the smaller animals that have thinner, because every single animal has a different structure. You know, if you look at a goat's, goat skin, it's a different structure to a deer skin. You know, deer skin, goat skin, you can be a little bit rough with. You know, cow skin, you can be a little bit rough with. Things like um, antelope, which we don't get here, but antelope, which is what I was trying to think of before, a sheep, anything like that, very, very thin. You know, so it has to be a little bit more care taken. But, you know, as I say, this one hasn't been smoked, it hasn't been finished. But this is what I do like about traditional skinning, um, tanning. A little flexibility. It's still got, it's a bit like, you know, having a lucky band there. Whereas you can't do that with this. This is, what you have is what you have. What I have here is still an open book. I can still do whatever I want with this. You know, it hasn't been smoked and it doesn't matter if it's been smoked because if you smoke it and you decide, no, I want it softer, just go and put it through the solution again. You know, just remember, you do have to smoke it again. Okay. Um, this one has had some water spilt on it, so it's gone a little bit hard, but that's okay. Because as I say, I haven't finished with this. I'm not sure what to do with it just at the moment. Um, but that's what I do like about natural natural tanning. You know, that, that flexibility. So you can see it's, it's like a lucky band. You know, the other thing to, to keep in mind, when you naturally tan, and, and this, is not a, this is not what they call a traditional tan. This is not leather, okay? This is basically cured. Um, when you when you do veggie tanning, that's making leather. You know, this is not not making leather. You know, this is this is curing it so as we can use it for whatever we want to use it for. And the thing I do like about this is when when you do this method, when you do natural tanning, what you do. Uh, in one of the processes is when you put it with lime, which I usually just use water, as you see them, if you've seen my video, I use mainly just water, but traditionally you use lime. Lime will lift all your hair and make it easier to scrape away. Okay? And then you, you just go through your processes. With chrome tanning, they strip everything out. All the glue, all, all, this, all the mucus, everything, you know, because the, your fibres your fibers are running like that and they have mucus between them, you know, which allows it to move. What happens when you chrome tan or when you chemically tan, you remove all that. So what you, you, you've still got a good product, but inferior 
to this. This has still got all the mucus, this has still got all the all what it needs to make it strong and binding. Whereas this, and you can you can tell because of the stretchiness, okay, compared to this, no stretchiness. Because all the mucus has been um, drawn out of it, taken out of it. So all you really have here is just fibre. Just fibres. You know, majority of everything else has been taken out. And that's that's why I do like this. Um, a, a hide that's been tanned naturally will last longer. You know, with, when you make your clothes out of your hides and that, don't wash them with, with detergent or anything. Just wash them in a warm bucket. You know, maybe a little bit of soap. You don't really need to. Um, and buckskin's a funny thing. You know, we... You don't have, you can wear it every day. And and it's, it's, how would you explain it? When you, when you wash it, like when we wash, when we get our clothes, we put them in the, in the washing machine and they agitate around and move around, and gets all the dirt out. Okay. If you do that with, with your, your shirt, so you've made a shirt, what will happen is it'll start to stretch and eventually it'll come a little bit bigger and a little bit stretchier than when you first made it. You know, so it's always recommended, um, just get a bucket, you know, lukewarm water that you can put your hand in, like you, when you're washing up. You don't want to burn it, you don't want it too hot. And just agitate it, you know, throw the dirty water out, agitate it again, and they will last you know, a very, very long time. Whereas if you do that with, with something that's been chrome tanned, it will, um, I won't say in a short period of time, but eventually what will happen is it will start to fall apart. And that, that's the main reason this is such a far superior. I, I recommend to people uh, when they say to me, you know, how would you, how would you do tanning? You know, if, 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 which method do you prefer? And as I said, it's up to you. You know, I mean, you might be very happy with, with chrome tanning whichever way you're, you're tanning that that's fine personally um, I prefer natural high tanning you know these were done with lecithin okay I have done um, brain tanning but up here it's not recommended you know the brains turn very quickly especially in summer you know and we get what they call sour brain you know you can still you can still tan with it but it's not a good idea to you know, put your hands in and it stinks. <laughs> it stinks. And the flies just come from everywhere. You know, um, in my next video I'll show you a sheepskin that I did with egg. You know, I used um, eight eggs. Was it eight eggs? Yeah, yeah, eight eggs. Eight eggs and about just over a litre of water. You know, um, with sheepskin, with, with any skin that, that's got thick fur, you know, if you do if you do natural tanning, and you can do natural tanning uh, with it, the the first thing is to soak a lot of it up. You know, and, and you've got to make sure that you get it as dry as possible so it doesn't rot. And always remember, when you're you're keeping your fur on or your hair on, your solution will not go through this way because you have a, a, a epidermis there that will stop it okay and when you when you do your your um you know take your fur off you take that off as well and you end up with something like this you know and if if any was left on you'll be able to see it it'll be a shiny little piece it it comes from this side if you've got something like this you know just chuck it in the bucket yeah, it'll, it'll soak through. Once you've got to, to this, it'll soak through both sides and meet in the middle. Okay. Yeah, with this, I, I prefer this method, as I said, because it's a far superior, far, far superior method. Your, your skins will last much longer. You know, um, the other method is, to know this method, 
Um, and I mean, I'm looking at the events of what's happening in the world today, and I'm thinking, holy moly, you know, we could end up back in the dark ages. You know, the thing with tanning is it's good to be um, a master at one, but it's better off if you know um, more than one method. As I say, in my next video, I'll show you a, a sheepskin I did, and I did that with eggs, you know, with chook eggs. You know, you can use brains, you can use chook eggs, you can use uh, lecithin with oil, you can use, um, I think, if I remember correctly, traditional Russians used liver, you know, to, to tan their hides. Um, the Mongolians, I think they used yak milk. You know, there's many, 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 many different methods it's just getting the oils from here soaking in so as i say i prefer this method you know if you want to know more about this method i do have a dvd go and check us out on our web page trying not to high tanning um i've also now uploaded where you can get individual videos you know that you can you can download straight onto your computer you might you might know how to flesh but you're not sure on, on what to use to tan there's a little section on there that, that will show you what to tan how much water to use how much of brains how many eggs etc etc yeah, check it out let us know what you think and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe push that like button and don't forget we have a facebook page come and join you know we we all share knowledge Okay, so I hope this helps. This this here is a pumic stone. If you have a look at my skins, okay, you can see where I've got the stone and I've rubbed off the, all the, the furry bits. If you have a look here, you can see they haven't done it. It's just get it done, get it out. And that's why chrome tanning was... was basically invented that's what they need to do to make it nice and softer I find with uh, traditional tanning when you're finished and you're ready to smoke and you get the, the excess um, they're, they're little bits that really start nowhere and go nowhere you know that you just get rid of when you do that it makes it your skin a little bit softer you know and then you can go and tan you know just remember if you're going to tan uh if you're going to smoke you know if you use a dark wood this will come out dark if you use a light wood it will come out a light color you know i mainly use hickory hickory can give you um a really beautiful golden color you know I, and it's a really nice color all right well, with that i'm going to go i hope this has helped you just a little bit of explaining of, of chrome tanning you know versus natural tanning personally i think learn natural learn natural tanning you know it, it's as i say you can get it done quicker and you have a far more superior quality you know material okay thank you very much for your help check out our channel go to our web page check it out please let us know what you think check out our facebook page you know australian natural high tanning join up share your knowledge you know yeah all right take care now stay safe stay proud till next time catch ya.